Hello, my name is Leighton Flowers from Sociology101.com, and I wanted to uh, comment on some of the backlash from uh, some comments that Dr. Paige Patterson uh, made at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary following the sermon of Dr. Rick Patrick, who preached on um, salvation, sociology. And of course, as a uh, Southern Baptist traditionalist, he promoted traditionalism and um, spoke against, to some degree, uh, Calvinistic um, leanings. And he also, within that context, really pushed people to begin to realize that when you adopt a, a more reformed perspective, then sometimes churches become um, more open to other reformed traditions. For example, you have uh, infant baptism within the Reformed tradition, or at least not, um, so, you know, not really defending the concept of even immersion baptism and those kinds of things. And we have record of some churches that have been historically Southern Baptist churches, which are now accepting members um, that were not baptized by immersion, for example. And these are the kinds of things that sometimes happen whenever a denomination. Um, kind of lowers its standard with regard to certain doctrinal issues and allows for, you know, um, you know, more ecumenical and various views. Now, I typically kind of side on the side of the autonomy of the local church and the churches to be able to decide where they stand theologically. And I have argued quite vehemently that that each individual church, just as each individual person, should have the freedom and the ability to read the scriptures for themselves and to discern for themselves what is right doctrine. And that's, I think, a value we as Baptists hold very high, is the religious liberty and the freedom to believe as we want to and not to have a hierarchical, you know, Vatican pope telling us what we should and shouldn't believe. We we are vehemently independent, sometimes maybe too much so. I don't know if, if it's always the best and most wise um, uh, position, but it is nonetheless what we have held to and, and something I, I value very much because I want my independent freedom and abilities to, you know, read the scriptures for myself and come to my own conclusions. Um, but there's also obviously value in um, the wisdom of others and taking in the consideration of what uh, other, other exegetes of the text um, believe and teach. Now, in the context of Rick's sermon, where he was talking about kind of a, a sense of a Trojan horse, where, and again, what he's talking about is within the sociological worldview of Calvinism, there's along with it things that are more theologically reformed in the, the Presbyterian kind of way. And so there's a higher form of Calvinism that doesn't look like what we see from most Southern Baptists. Um, even Southern Baptists that have been typically soteriologically affirmers of a, some form of tulip, you know, a three-point or a four-point kind of tulip typically within Southern Baptists has been the more popular v version. And when you have uh, a lower form, and some might even call it a lesser consistent form of Calvinism that's not really Reformed Calvinism, baptize your infants kind of Calvinism, but instead kind of a, a quasi-moderate Calvinism, um, there's, there's a distinction there, and there's a context there. And so what, what Dr. Patterson gets up and says afterwards is in the context of Rick Patrick's sermon about the higher Calvinists moving the convention to, become looking, to, to look more like Presbyterianism and to look like true high Reformed kind of church. And then he makes a comment which does kind of indicate like, um, you know, he actually clarifies this, that if, you know, if, if I were going to adopt that, if I were going to adopt that kind of Calvinism, then I, I would leave the Southern Baptists and just become a Presbyterian because Presbyterianism already looks like that. Um, and I'll play both of these clips for you um, because I want you to see and hear for yourself, but that's the context of this. And so a lot of people are just playing that little clip of of um, Dr. Patterson talking about uh, leaving the, you know, leaving Baptist, and they're taking that as if he's saying everyone who's a Calvinist or who affirms some form of tulip um, should leave the Southern Baptist Convention. And again, I don't think that they're necessarily practicing the, the what we've talked about before, the principle of charity. Now, the principle of charity, to remind you, is when you believe the best about a person. It's when you try to understand 
the context and what they were meaning. Um, it's when you assume the best possible interpretation. Um, you you uh, also are willing to listen to their follow-up and clarifying comments, which um, Dr. Patterson does offer a clarifying comment. And so uh, the, the principle of charity, of a true brother in Christ, would be to hear his commentary and to understand what he was trying to, to say in the context of the sermon that was just preached and the concept of this kind of this high Calvinism that looks a lot more like Reformed Presbyterianism than typical Calvinistic Southern Baptist. Now, if one asks themselves, do you think that Paige Patterson really wants uh, those who hold to kind of a, a tulip systematic or a, a more Baptistic kind of Calvinism that we've seen throughout Calvinistic history, um, do you think he really wants them to leave the SBC or his school? Well, one, I think, only needs to, to hear what Paige Patterson said right after my sermon when I was there. I, I preached on soteriology when I was there, and uh, he made some comments about, uh, about this. And so I want you to listen for yourself what he says to, um, to his audience there at Southwestern Baptist right after my sermon, and you tell me what his heart is in this issue. And so you better be really sure of your position, okay? Not on the basis of what of your position, okay? Not on the basis of what popular gurus say, but on the basis of what God's Word says. Now, if you still come to the conclusion that you're a Calvinist, first of all, you're going to be greatly loved in this institution. Secondly, if anybody ever abuses you and takes advantage of you and is unkind to you about that, I want to know about it. It won't happen again. As one of my Calvinistic students said to me one day when I asked him, why do you take my classes? And he said, well, I take your classes because you bend over backwards when you grade my papers, not to be unfair. And he's exactly right. He got better grades than he really made all the way through. <laughs> and uh, so it, it was ordained of God. And uh, so uh, in any event, I don't want anybody mistreated under any circumstances, but I do want you to think about it. And thank you so very, very much, my brother, for doing it. Okay. All right. Now, I, I think you can hear real clearly what his heart is towards Calvinistic students in his own institution. Now, do you really think this man really wants those same Calvinistic students to leave the SBC altogether? His, they don't want him, he didn't want him to be treated unfairly in his own institution, according to what he's just said there. So the principle of charity would take everything that Dr. Patterson has said um, into context and to understand why he may have said some of the things he did with regard to um, the higher forms of Calvinism. And to understand that whenever he says, this is what I would do based upon you know my feelings and where I would go, um, that it doesn't necessarily um, it doesn't necessarily be it need to be interpreted as him telling everybody that they need to leave the SBC or his institution just because they hold to some form of lower Calvinism, um, and and I, I think that's that again just practicing the principle of charity, trying to understand the intention of what he was saying. As a matter of fact, um, let me play you the clip of what he said. That way we can get it in the context, and then I'll also read to you the follow up. Um, a blog um, article that he um, posted as clarification uh, the very next day. A wonderful presentation, and I trust that you will seriously consider it. I know that there are a fair number of you who think you're a Calvinist, um, but understand that uh, there is a denomination which represents that view. It's called Presbyterian. I have great respect for them. They are, many of them, the vast majority of them, our brothers in Christ, and I honor uh, their position. Okay, so keep in mind that, again, Dr. Patrick has just talked about a higher form of Calvinism that is not affirming uh, very clearly uh, credo-baptism and, um, and baptism by immersion, and some of the, the typically more Presbyterian positions that have been distinct from Southern Baptist. And so it's in that context that he is talking about, some of you think you're Calvinistic. Well, yeah, you're, you're a moderate lower form. You're not baptized infants kind of a Calvinist, as a true Reformed, you know, R.C. Sproul kind of a Calvinist would be. 
And so that's the context he's addressing this, quote, Calvinism. Now, again, I know soteriologically Calvinism is a broader spectrum than that, and that that's one of the reasons I think he had to offer the, the you know, the clarification of what he was saying and, and to uh, clarify that he's not trying to say that everyone should lead the convention if they're Calvinist or they lean towards Calvinism or they're a point, have some number of points within Calvinism that they would agree with. And so keep that in mind as you're listening to this, this portion of it. But if I held that position, I'd become a Presbyterian. I, I would not remain a Baptist because the Baptist position from the time of the Anabaptists, really from the time of the New Testament, is very different. And uh, I think he, uh, Brother Rick, made the case this morning that you need to consider, and I hope you seriously will consider it in the days that come. And I okay. And so um, let me read to you um, how he explained what he meant by that. Um, he, he just issued a statement afterwards, and I just want to read it to you verbatim. That way you know what it is. I'll put it up here on the screen as well. Okay, here is that um, commentary. It's from theologicalmatters.com, where uh, ultimately it's the Southwestern's you know, blog articles that uh, they produce. And this is published back on December the 2nd. It says, Recently, a speaker in chapel at Southwestern dealt with a portion of his message with the subject of Calvinism. It has a link there to the original chap chapel message from Dr. Rick Patrick. Um, uh, he presented his views on the subject as would be expected at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in view of our current discussions on denomination. At the close, the president responded to rude behavior on part of a few Calvinists, uh, Cal presumably, I guess I would say, a uh, few students, who had not agreed with the speaker and had stood up during the message and walked out to show their displeasure. In my reported statements, let it be clear, I asked no one to leave the SBC. Let me go further and say I am fully aware that Baptists have historically been divided into two camps, at least, namely Calvinistic and non-Calvinistic. Um, I do not anticipate that this will change, though historically one observes an ebb and flow within these positions, just as in the doctrine of eschatology. I must also acknowledge that as long as the heart is hot for a winning of men and women to Christ, as long as the passion, uh, as long as the passionate evangelism exhibited in the New Testament is the major commitment, as long as Calvinism on display is like that of Spurgeon, or even uh, who even wrote a book specifically on soul winning, I am content. No, I am elated to work with these brethren for the cause of Christ. What I did say was about myself. I said that if I had held to Presbyterian beliefs, I would be Presbyterian. Again, that goes to what I was talking about earlier, is that you got to remember, in the context, Rick Patrick was talking about a more Presbyterian or a higher form of Calvinism. And so he was in the context commenting on the higher forms of Calvinism that are pulling the Southern Baptist to adopt typically more Presbyterian types of polity and practice. Um, so he says, if I held two charismatic beliefs, I would probably affiliate with the Assemblies of God. If my only difference with Presbyterians were that I favored only baptism of adult believers rather than the baptism of infants, I would probably be conflicted. But I might affiliate with primitive Baptists. I asked no one else to respond this way. I asked no one else to respond this way. I expressed what I would do, just as every Baptist is free to do, and especially as is our custom in the academic world. My own theological roots are with the Anabaptists and the early General Baptist of England. That, too, is a position well represented in Southern Baptist life. The Baptist Faith and Message 2000 is a document written um, as a purposeful and, pos and as possible to allow for both views, in other words, more general, which we've talked about here before. I I've appointed the committee that drafted the revision. Uh, purposefully in my appointments, I included representation from the diversity within Southern Baptist life. The members of that committee had a variety of views, among them being Calvinist and non-Calvinist. My perspectives have not changed. Um, on the other hand, the whole conservative resurgence was really always about one thing, reaching men and women for Christ. My unalterable fear for our denomination today is that baptisms will continue to plummet, given a certain indication of loss of evangelistic concern and fervency. Southern Baptists prospered by being the most effectively evangelistic among all denominations, and we will only prosper again if we honor God in that way. Again, I expressed in chapel my personal commitment. I did not mandate anyone else to do anything. Believing as I do that some good can come from even our most severe misunderstandings and human faux pas, wishing that I had been more precise, maybe from all of this can come a new uh, determination 
to present the gospel to every man, woman, boy, and girl. At least, that is what I am hoping to attempt from whatever remains of my life. After all, Jesus said, Follow me, that I will make you fishers of men. And any fisherman knows that you do not catch fish by sitting in a boat discussing fishing or arguing incessantly about the nature of fishing. I think this is a, a good article and an explanation from, and you can that's, see that's directly from Paige Patterson himself, giving some explanation as to uh, the intention of his words. So, in conclusion, um, concerning the remarks on Calvinism in the chapel at Southwestern, I would say that we need to practice the principle of charity in understanding the intention of Paige Patterson, given the scope of his work and how he's worked well with Calvinistic uh, professors and others within his institution, his encouragement of Calvinistic students to remain and to be even protected uh, in the sense of have, uh, having an education that's uh, fair, just as I would hope Southern Seminary would do with non-Calvinistic students, despite the fact that Al Mohler is unapologetically Calvinistic, as are most of his professors. Um, and so uh, th this is not um, something I think that we need to blow out of proportion or to um, uh, try to bash someone as to saying that they're they're um, pushing for uh, you know all Calvinists to leave this leave the Southern Baptist Convention or to leave Southwestern Baptist Theological uh, Seminary or that um, there's not the willingness for us to work together as traditionalists with our Calvinistic brothers. Um, I, I think that would be a, a farce and taking things way too far. But nevertheless, there are going to be internet folks out there who are upset. Um, who um, are seeking to um, demean and to demoralize and to uh, raise up controversy and to cause more conflict than necessary. And, um, and instead of giving the benefit of the doubt, practicing the principle of charity, what I suspect you'll hear is more people um, really focusing upon um, the most negative possible interpretation that could that could come from this, um, not striving in any way to look at any other contextual information that was being said in that sermon, um, not looking at other comments that have been made by Dr. Patterson, as well as the history of his uh, cordiality with uh, Calvinistic uh, professors and brothers. And, uh, and I think that's unfortunate. And I think that we, we need to call each other to a higher standard with regard to that. So um, if, for those that you see who are making those kinds of accusations against Paige Patterson or Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, or that you hear um, saying derogatory comments about traditionalists in general, um, in, in kindness and in love, please continue to treat them uh, in love despite how they may treat you or how anyone may treat you for that matter. Um, and continue to be uh, a positive example for Christ on both sides of this. We need to strive for, for charity and unity in the body. And, uh, and share this video with them if you care to do so in order to give another perspective and other side for consideration. I pray this will edify the church and, um, and you individually. Blessings to you.